As someone who's married to a doctor, in the medical field, I think it's pretty important to have a precise understanding of what the words mean, just so that you can understand what people are talking about, if, if either you are a healthcare professional or if some healthcare professional is talking to you, as, as my wife does when, well, sometimes does, when she comes home from work. So let, let's get a little bit more precise with some of the words we've been talking about, especially relative to heart disease and heart failure and all of the rest. So let's say that this is an artery. The blood is flowing in that direction. I, I'll show the artery branching off. It thins as it goes further and further along. So this right here is an artery. And let me draw a plaque in that artery. And we've been, we've been studying these plaques in arteries since the video on, on heart attacks. So let's say that this is a bunch of white, you know, white blood cells and, and lipid material. So it's cholesterol and fats and all the rest. Now, a word that you might hear in kind of a medical context is stenosis. 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 And the word stenosis just refers to the narrowing, usually of a blood vessel. So this right here, this blood vessel has been narrowed. So this right over here is stenosis. It's been narrowed by this plaque. It can also refer to the narrowing of kind of any type of tubular structure. So if you have any type of kind of pipe in a in a biological system and it gets narrowed, they might refer to stenosis there. But usually they're talking about a blood vessel. In this in this example that I've drawn here, it's an artery. So the stenosis is just the narrowing is just the narrowing now once once the blood vessel is narrowed that restricts the blood supply so you aren't able to get as much blood through it you're not able to get as much blood through it so the blood supply is restricted so restricted blood supply restricted put the eye there, restricted blood supply. This, re this restriction of a blood supply that usually loses, that usually leads to some type of loss of function, that's called, so this restricted blood supply, this is called ischemia. Another fancy word, but it literally just means restricted blood supply. Ischemia. Now, if you have stenosis in one of your blood vessels, in one of your arteries, and it restricts your blood supply, so it leads to ischemia, then the muscles, let's say, let me draw a muscle cell further over here. And let's say that these are, this is a coronary artery that we're dealing with. The muscle cells over here are going to get less oxygen. So this guy, let me draw a little bit. This cell right over here, and I'm just drawing an oversimplified diagram. I'm not going to imply that muscle cells really look like that. And actually, they won't be, well, I, I won't go into the details here. But this guy's not going to get not, not enough, not enough oxygen. Not enough oxygen. So you can imagine that if you know we're really zoomed in onto the surface of the heart, we're looking at the, the heart muscle tissue right here. If whoever's heart this was, if they started to go jogging or whatever, and this and this cell needed more oxygen, probably wouldn't be able to get that oxygen because of the stenosis, which caused ischemia. And because of that, it doesn't have enough oxygen so that the heart it won't be able to help the heart pump. Remember, this is just one of the muscles in the heart that's going to help it pump the blood properly. So it's going to lead to heart failure. Heart failure. Failure. And once again, the word heart failure sounds more dramatic than maybe it really is. It sounds like cardiac arrest, where the heart stops. But heart failure is not saying that the heart has completely failed. It's just saying that the heart is failing its ability to kind of properly do its function. So when this guy goes jogging, because he has a restricted blood supply, because it, 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 the heart is experiencing ischemia down, down uh, I guess, downstream from this stenosis, that's why there's heart failure. It's not able to deliver. Now, this heart failure, which is due to the ischemia and this, which is due to the stenosis, you would call this heart failure due to coronary artery disease. Let me write it. We talked about that in, the la in two videos ago. Coronary, coronary, coronary artery disease, which is really just kind of a, 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 an impairing of the heart's function because of reduced blood supply, because of a narrowing in a blood vessel, which restricts the blood supply, ischemia. That is coronary artery disease. And because of coronary artery disease, when this cell, when this muscle cell in the heart really needs to pump hard, maybe because someone's going up a hill or climbing stairs, it's not able to do it because it's not getting enough oxygen. And that inability to properly, for the heart, not just the cell, but for the whole heart, this is just 
one of many cells that maybe won't be able to pump properly. For the entire heart to not do its job, that is heart failure. Now, you've also probably heard the terms coronary heart disease. Coronary heart, heart disease, or maybe just heart disease. Heart disease. These three things are all the same thing. These are all the same. They all imply some type of narrowing or stenosis of arteries that leads to ischemia, reduced blood flow, so that the heart can't function as well as it otherwise could. Now the last thing I want to focus on, and I talked a little bit about it in the last video, is the idea of an infarct or an infarction. These are kind of funny words to say, so I'll write it over here. So an infarct, infarct or infarction. So in the example I've drawn so far, this, this cell, for example, maybe does not get enough oxygen, especially once the person is going upstairs and all of that, to properly help, to ho properly contract and help the, the, the heart actually pump. But it's not dead. It's still getting some base level of oxygen, less because of the stenosis and the ischemia, but it still gets some oxygen. And we saw in the video on myocardial infarction, or the video on heart attacks, that sometimes one of these plaques might become unstable and they break off and then you have a complete you have a complete blocking of a vessel a complete blocking of a of an artery right here and we saw in the last video we called this blocking what's well, called an embolism and if it's due to if if it's an embolism is the general term for something that floated around and then eventually blocks a vessel and if it was due to a kind of a, a released plaque that also had clotting factors around it after it got released then we would call this a thromboembolism and this would completely this would this would reduce the the blood flow so much this reduces the blood flow so much, maybe a little bit might be able to leak around, but it l reduces it so much that the cells downstream from this actually die. So you actually have the cell right over here, and this cell will die because it's not even, it might get very little blood or no blood at all, so it's not getting enough oxygen to actually survive. And when you have dead tissue, when you have dead tissue that's due to a loss of oxygen, this is an infarct, dead tissue due to a loss of oxygen. The process of it becoming dead tissue due to a loss of oxygen is an infarction. And this infarction, this dead tissue due to loss of oxygen in, in, in the myocardium, in the muscle tissue of the heart, so now all of a sudden you have muscle tissue in the heart that's beginning to die, this is a heart attack. This is a myocardial infarction. So hopefully that clarifies things a little bit.